This podcast is sponsored by Kingdom of Sweets. For the same price as a sofa, you can buy one pack of golf ball mouth stoppers and a bag of Cheetos. And that isn't including the price of the bags. Send it. Welcome to the Daft Lad Podcast. I take no prisoners, just inmates, whatever that fucking means. Daft. I hope you handsome bastards. It's the 12th of June and it's been 26 degrees today and I've been working and I feel like a fucking lasagna. You can tell if you're watching this podcast, you can watch it on YouTube. I've got a lovely glint on my face. That isn't just fake tan, that is real tan. And welcome to the Daft Lad Podcast. My name is Rob Clamp and I steal life-saving rings from Public Ponds. I'm joking, just having a bit of a lad daft. I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic and I hope you you are loved by someone today. And that is me for listening to this shit bag of a podcast. Wee! So it's episode 8, right? There's going to be 10 episodes in this series because I can't think of anything and I've got a lot to do in my life. Um, It's episode 8, right? Series 2. I wonder if anyone has gone through every episode from series 1 to now. If you have, right, hook me up on social, send me your address, and I'll send you some spag ball second class. Because you deserve some of it. Anyway, so let's uh, let's get into today's episode. By the way, you know a lot of podcasts and these things have subscribers and you can pay monthly. I don't have a Patreon, because um, I'm not a scrounging cat piss of a podcaster. But my PayPal details can be supplied to anyone who wants to send me friends and family on PayPal. Or if you message me, and um, I can give you my account number and sort code, right? I'm off to Disney next year. Need some funding. <laughs> I'm only joking. So I like to give people a lift in my vehicle sometimes. And giving someone a lift, I'm basically saving their life for the whole of that journey. Because I didn't crash. So I've saved their life. They could have walked, I've chosen to come with me. Same with a pilot or a plane driver. Uh, taxi driver, you know what I mean? Paul Uber is in control of your life. You're paying him or her 15 quid, right? To control your life and don't crash. You know, you have to fill out these forms, right? Who is your emergency contact? When everyone likes to put their mum, dad, girlfriend, I'm like, I'm going to put fucking doctor's phone number down. Uh, you know what I mean? Why would I put anyone else? Why do people post pictures of their new babies, right? On fucking Facebook Two minutes after it's come out the womb, can you let it finish for in first and try and have me chicken Kievs? Scared the Michelle me scrolling on Facebook. A newly born baby looks like my little toe after it's got epic athlete foot. You just put some restoration cream on it. That's what a newly born baby looks like. It looks like you've dipped it in mully yogurt. Also, that grey and white scan of your baby before it's born, it looks like Lord Imhotep in his coffin. <laughs> With a plasma TV screen behind the kid, it's just showing static. On, it's not. <laughs> it's not been hooked up to antennae. Looks like that, doesn't it? So we're on tour, right, with my band in April, and we were driving from. Could have been Peterborough back home, and our guitarist, right, he just said to me, "My new habit in the shower." is I brush my teeth at the same time as being in the shower. And then our singer says, oh yeah, mate, I've started doing that. It saves time, saves time. And I was just like, what? I've never heard of that. I started telling him to fuck off. I've never heard of it. I was that flabbergasted. My tattoo nearly fell off. I was like, I've never heard of that, but is it a great idea? I know they want to save time, but you're going to get Colgate over your grippers. If people are brushing their teeth in the shower to save time, does that mean I can take a shit in the shower? Before I apply the blue links to the crack of doom. Does it? Also, I'm not one for having showers on a morning. Who's having a shower in the morning? Don't have time for that. I don't want to be up earlier. I want my work day to last, you know, 8 till 4 to last as quickly as possible. If I'm getting up at fucking 6 for a shower, that's having two more hours basically onto my work morning. Fuck that, I want to be up at quarter to 8. And also, having a shower at morning, for me, I'm working all day in machinery, so I'm like, I'm not going to have a shower, go get mucked up, 
come back and just think, you want to have a shower before you go to bed, best sleep you ever have. And if it's, uh, you know, like it is now June, 25 degrees, cold showers, unreal. Unreal cold showers. Make you flabbergasted. It's like water is blue links. Anyway. Anyway, let's let's break this up. Where you got this feeling? I see the look, it's in your eyes. You disagree, and it is no sub. Here we go. So this is this is one to test the brain, right? I've never had anything like this on the podcast, I think. It's a little brain teaser, but it hurts. Brain fuckers. I'm gonna call this a brain fucker, right? Best one I've heard in ages. So here we go. You have 24 hours to hide a paperclip in your house, and then the best detective in the world is going to come and have to find it within 24 hours and figure out where you're hiding the paperclip. Where are you going to put it? My first thought was to swallow the paperclip, but I don't want my third coming out looking like my BTEC sport assignment <laughs> on the skeletal system, you know what I mean? I'm not swallowing that. Where would you put it? Email me, DM me, at the Daflad Podcast on all the socials. We should see what anyone else does. I don't think anyone really replies to me on the socials or finds me on there. But if you have a you know a spare five minutes, let us know what would you do with this brain fucker, right? One idea I had was going to garden and just push the paper clip as far into the soil as I could. But then it, that's not in the house, is it? Um, you could put it in a plant pot, put the paper clip in, something to smash it down with. I don't know. He'll find it. He'll find it. She'll find it. Well, she'll detective. Surely the detective will find it in me, you know, Christmas lights in the attic. They'll, they'll search everywhere. Or maybe you go into attic and uh, push a paperclip into the uh, fiberglass insulation. That means if they do find it, you can still laugh at them. And then they'll get a gammy wrist or something from fiberglass. That should be fun. So I might be putting it attic. By the way, before I move on, it is the 12th of June. Just want to say, for this year, have a very Merry Christmas and a great New Year. Um, I know we're maybe six, seven months off. Just want to gather in before I forget. Here's one for you. They should really put more things to do in an airport. At the minute you have duty free, right? That's one flame away from being a shop of Molotov. Also, you've got a few shops to go in. WH Smith for a 20 quid meal deal and a 70 quid paperback for plane. You're going to read once. I feel like they should put into airports like an escape room. Maybe a escape room in duty free. You know? And if you can't escape, the plane fucks off without you. Yeah? But if you win, you get some lovely daisy blue for last. You know what I mean? Bit of perfume. Or they could put into airports like a little cinema. A little cinema with Netflix on, a few sofas, Netflix, VIP, Cineworld. Yeah. Mini golf, axe throwing. Not really. Is it ideal taking a golf club with an axe into an airport? Maybe not. You can take your own clubs. I thought this because duty free, right, is a shopping centre that you can't leave. You literally can't leave duty free or the airport without boarding some form of wings. Give me 10 pin bowling in duty free, I'll be based. Make it like centre parks. Go to a little reception, and you can book a slot. Oh yeah, they're missing a right trick here. Go and book some snooker for an hour. Go collect balls from reception next to W. H. Smith, yeah? Have a Burger King while you're having a game. They're missing a trick. How about, right? How about in airports and duty-free, you wait in two or three hours? Why not put a little venue for musicians and bands, small bands, at duty-free? You've got two hours to kill, right? Imagine not local small bands, unsigned bands, like us, right? Bag them in there, have an endless 24-hour loop of bands, right? So for an hour, a band plays. Another hour, right? Oh, local bands, get them in. It's a right shout. Because you can't escape duty-free. Get my band, right? Foxhaunt, alt-rock, bit of Yumi 6 vibes we got going. Some people like that. Put that on at 5 o'clock. Go for a Burger King, get on your fucking plane. Just literally, it'll be class, because most gigs nowadays, you don't know if anyone's going to show up. And it'll be free, right? People can just filter in, just get through security, go for a £10 Toblerone, you can hear the tunes, oh, what's going on here, what's going on here? You go into a little venue, it's dark, hot lights are going on, we're fucking moshing away, Fox aren't, you know what I mean? Then we go off after an hour, another band comes on, and you're there like, oh, this is class, you want a cocktail? Yeah, you want a cocktail? Then it's like, right, me, me plane's boarding, you fuck off, some more people filter in. Because you know with gigs nowadays, it's not knowing if anyone's going to show up, especially for small bands and signed bands, local bands. 
It's a great idea. I think that's the best idea I've had in months. Yeah. Anyway, went to get my hair cut today. Hairdresser sneezed on me. My hair went like that. Woo! Here's a lovely harmless prank idea for you. Ring up a random number, or when they pick it up and they go, hello, leave it a few seconds, maybe three, four, and then just sneeze and put the phone down. Bit of fun. Or instead of uh, a sneeze, do the TikTok dad sleeping in a hotel noise. Oh! <laughs> anyway, let's get some Fox on. on. Tired and anxious over what comes next. Stop dragging me down, I will never forget. I'll take my chances, cause I've had enough of figuring out why the world doesn't care. Wind turbines scare the living shit out of me. Especially when they're spinning. Especially when they're not spinning. You know, you're driving out A1M. You're going past about 20 wind turbines. You go up and out the window. You're like, oh, God, what if they had legs and ran at me? There's always three wind turbines in a field. There's always three. There'll be two spinning and one not. And I always think, with that one not spinning, 25% of people in that local area won't be getting electric. It's not how it works, though, is it? I've never seen a wind turbine start spinning or stop spinning. If they're struggling to spin, right, and you're not making electric, get some firework rockets, attach them to each of the handles sticking out, set them off. It'll go, whoa, spin around like a Catherine wheel. Good old calf. Everyone loves a little trip to a restaurant. Went to Cut and Craft in York the other week. I've got a nice steak. People who go with me there, they, they like raw steak. They like medium rare. They're pretty, pretty rogue. I know it's quite normal for steak, but I went in there, right, and I was ordering my food. Basically, I love a well-done steak. Tommy sauce. I have Tommy sauce with everything. Um, I don't have it with... I have it with everything. Apart from Yorkshire puddings and gravy. I like it in my spag bowl. Mash. If it mash and peas, put some out of sauce in it, make a little bit of cement. Start doing an extension on my house with that. Um... So yeah, the rest of the lads like it medium rare kind of thing. And I said to the waiter, um, can I have the flat iron steak please? And he, oh, I hope he got a strong jaw. And everyone was like, ah, lol, pants. And I was just like, yeah, great stuff, mate. I nearly picked up an off cut of tomato and threw it out of like a Semtex. Have you ever had this before? Waiter or waitress comes and sits down with you when they want to take your order. I booked this for six, mate, not seven. You'll be sat in a circular booth that's like Pac-Man shaped, right? Wait, it will come over and sit down next to you and go, excuse me, but just shuffle up. And I'm sat there like, what the fuck are you doing, Josh from Arrogate? It's getting a bit intimate, this. Oh, yeah, mate, can I have the lamb shish and chips, please? Also, how's the family? How are you doing? You okay? You doing well? It's even worse when they get on the knees. They have their elbows on the table like that because there's no chairs. I'm like, what do you want? I've never been under head height to a waiter or waitress, you know what I mean? All I can see is a floating head. It's like, Jesus, mate, what's happened to you? Anyway, let's have some tunes. Right, here we go. Here's some lovely random thoughts to take into your day that have made me completely mind-fucked. So here we go. It's impossible to touch your elbow with your forehead. Not happening. You can't move your toes individually. No, not happening. Can you burn water? And how many books do you need to call it a library? Why is rush hour called rush hour when it's the slowest traffic of the day? Why is there a D in the word fridge but not in the word refrigerator? And these are two that I've made up myself. Why does brown sugar smell of horse food? And when it thunders, it's just the angels playing 10 pin bowling. And if you want to send me any stupid shit like that, you can message me on the socials or email me at the podcast at gmail.com. Yeah? One for you. I once got a cold for shouting too loud. Yeah? Mental, right? So I was watching Liverpool v Barcelona in 2019. No one home, living with parents, right? So Liverpool were 3 0 down from the first leg, had to win 4-0 to win and not let the Barcelona score, right? It was like seven minutes in, right? And we scored the first goal. Divock Origi scored. And I literally screeched like a fucking Nazgul, right? 
full on Yorkshire Nazgul, right? And then for the next day and the week after, Jesus, my throat. Literally, I thought I had, I woke up and I thought I had COVID. That wasn't even a thing. It was awful. I couldn't even taste my gizzard. It was like tasting death. Strep throat, Jesus, banging sore throat like. So that's a bit of a fun story, isn't it? Oh yeah, my mate. Oh, I'll turn the Xbox off. What's that doing on? Um, so my mate came up to me at work and said, Scotty, mate, do you know how microwaves work? And I says, isn't it just a small oven? No, I was listening to a podcast and he said that the microwaves are sent through your food and they heat up the water molecules and that's what heats up your food. And then he says that's why something like bread isn't best at heating up because it's not as much moisture as like a soup. And then he also says how the first thing was microwaved. But it wasn't in a microwave. This is how it's what happened, right? He says, back in the day, um, someone stood in the way of a microwave signal and this person had a chocolate bar in their pocket that melted because of the microwave signal. Pretty cool, isn't it? So the plate you microwave food in will only be hot if there's food touching it. That's why you can pick the plate out of the microwave by its edge. I don't know if that's true because every time I eat some, I've never heated a plate up by itself. So then I said back to him, so can I heat my pizza slice up on a piece of A4 paper? And he was like, I think so, it won't set on fire. So give it a try. Put a bit of A4 paper into the microwave and see what happens, yeah? Use your sign somewhere to heat up your cranberry quiche, right? And if it does burn, just say to your teacher, sorry, I didn't do my homework because my microwave burnt it. And then another lad at me work, right, before we get to the end of this podcast, he said to me, oh, mate, um, I've just got a new orange beanie from Hydro's. <laughs> he said, I went down to Hydro's and some lad called Tommy Phosphorus. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> he said, apparently Tommy said, oh, mate, your bald head looks fucking vulnerable. I'm going to go get you a Hydro's beanie. And I was just like, the, the best thing from that story is someone called Tommy Phosphorus. <laughs> What a name. <laughs> so before I leave you today, here's some fantastic advice for you, right? That you can take into your lives. And if you've not heard of a website called Top Cashback, it's basically where you buy something through Top Cashback and you get cash back for buying it. It's class, right? So I bought a travel lodge for 150 quid through Top Cashback. So it's partnered with Top Cashback. You can partner with like Sports Direct and the range. So sign into Top Cashback, right? This isn't an advert for it. It's just great because it's free money. Sign up to Top Cashback. Search if the website you're buying through is on it. Travelodge was on it for me. I was getting maybe like 4% cashback. Can't do maths. So I went through that and I bought a hotel for 150 quid through Travelodge and Top Cashback, right? And I got back like two or three quid from it, right? So that's a good example. But when I first got into this house, I bought my Sky Wi-Fi through top cashback and through sky and there was a great like percent on it or summit so i can't remember how much my uh wi-fi was but i got 120 quid cash back from buying sky through top cashback right so here's my advice buy 23 sky wi-fi's through top cashback right when the when it's a good deal and you're going to get 120 quid back every time Please don't do this. And then um, send your Wi-Fi back and get a refund and just keep buying it. Circle of life. It's worth a punt. And also before I leave for this episode, I just want to say thank you to anyone who's listened to the podcast or this episode. I look back, it's June now, I look back in the last few podcast episodes, getting like maybe 15, 20 plays, which is class really. I do this for a bit of a laugh, you know what I mean? I can listen to it at work. But thanks to anyone who's listening, or was watching it, and who's maybe showed the mates. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's a bit of fun. Just like my Just Gaming Fellows YouTube gaming channel. I've got a thousand videos on there of me playing video games. I'm not doing it to get a million views. Just doing it for a bit of fun. You know what I mean? So thanks to anyone who is. And uh, yeah, I hope you're having a good day. If anyone's going to give you a shit day today, go get some of those little airbags that you get in parcels, right? Like a row of them. And then go put the airbags in front of someone's car wheel who's really pissing you off to there, right? That's parked up. And then when they drive off, it's like a couple of landmines have set off when they drive over those airbags. And you can laugh at it. And yeah, send me anything you want to my Gmail, the daftladpodcast at gmail.com. Or find me on the socials. I'm on TikTok. I post mainly on there. And then new episodes are always posted on like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
So there you go. Thank you for listening to episode 8 of series 2 of the Dathlad podcast. My name is not Rob Clamp. It's Tommy Phosphorus. <laughs> anyway, I'm off now. I've got a booking in at Curry's PC World. It's Curry Night. More for a chicken boner than a laptop. See ya. You know, you know.